Trying to decide between Clomid and Letrozole for ovulation induction? These medications are commonly used in fertility treatment and they can be confused because they're similar, but they work very differently, have different side effects, and you need to know which one is right for you. Let's get into it. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist, helping people build families for over 20 years and helping people decide between Clomid and Letrozole every day. I love educating. If this is your first time finding the channel, welcome. Be sure and subscribe so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And if you are coming back to the channel, welcome back. I'm so glad that you find this education valuable. There's two other ways to stay connected. One is my weekly newsletter, link in the description below. You get fertility in the news, updates, educational content, and recommendations every week. The second way is my Brave and Curious podcast. You can listen anywhere you listen to podcasts, weekly deep dives into topics around reproductive health and wellness, or expert interviews. Today, we're focusing on two commonly prescribed medications in fertility that could not be more different. Clomid or clomiphene versus letrozole or Femara. These medications are often used in either timed intercourse cycles or intrauterine insemination cycles, and they can be similar uh, and used for similar goals, but they are very different. If you've been offered these medications and you're curious about the difference, this video is for you. We're gonna go over five main topics today. Number one, history on these medications. Number two, what these medications are used for. Number three, how these medications work. Number four, typical ways they are prescribed and doses. Number five, side effects. Now stick around to the end of the video where I'll go over common questions you should ask your doctor to help you make the right decision. Topic number one, history of these medications. Let's start with Clomid first. Clomid can often be called Clomiphene. Clomiphene is the generic word of the medication and Clomid is actually the brand name, but we often will just say Clomid. It was developed in the 1950s and approved for use in fertility by the FDA in 1967. It became the go-to medication for inducing ovulation and fertility treatments for decades. It's still widely used today, mainly for patients with ovulation dysfunction or unexplained infertility. Now, Letrozole or Fermara. So Fermara is the brand name, Letrozole is the generic name, and we most often refer to it as Letrozole. This was originally created for use in breast cancer patients and approved by the FDA for this use in 1997. It began being used by fertility doctors like me off-label in the early 2000s because it works so well in our patients to induce ovulation, but it is not FDA approved for this purpose. It's now actually recommended as first-line treatment for ovulation induction in patients with PCOS. So the research supports using Letrozole or Fermara for ovulation induction. Even though it's relatively new compared to Clomid, it's become first line in many situations. Topic number two, what are these medications used to treat? Both of these medications are used to induce ovulation in people who are trying to conceive, especially in people who are not ovulating regularly. This is most common patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS or many other reasons why people might not having a regular ovulation or a regular monthly period. Giving these medications early in the cycle can help with follicular recruitment, maturation, and help someone ovulate to try to conceive. These medications can be used for lots of different reasons. It could be used to induce ovulation for people that aren't ovulating regularly. It can be used in conjunction with other treatments like an intrauterine insemination for male factor fertility, and it can often be used for unexplained infertility. Topic number three, how do these medications work? Clomid blocks estrogen receptors in the brain, tricking the body into thinking that estrogen levels are low. This triggers the pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, FSH and LH in order to select an egg to mature and eventually ovulate. Letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor. It lowers estrogen levels in the body by blocking the enzyme aromatase that typically converts androgens to estrogen. This drop in estrogen levels triggers the release of the follicle stimulating hormone, allowing that process of follicles to grow and eventually ovulate. It does not block estrogen receptors like Clomid does. Topic number four, how are these medications prescribed and typically used? Both of these medications, Clomid and Letrozole, are pills, and they're typically taken on cycle day 
two, three, or four to start, and for the next five days in the cycle. So a typical time to take it is cycle day three through seven, but it could be cycle day four through eight, it could be cycle day five through nine. If you start the medication after day five in the cycle, it most likely won't help recruit the best follicle. It's just a little bit past the window. Clomid comes in a dose of 50 milligrams. So the pill is a 50 milligram pill. And you typically take one pill a day for five days in the cycle. The maximum dose that's usually given is 150 milligrams or three pills of Clomid each day, five days in the beginning of the cycle. The only real reason to increase the dose of Clomid is if someone is not ovulating with the current dose that you started with. Letrozole comes in pills that are 2.5 milligrams. A typical starting dose is one to two pills each day for five days in the cycle. Again, typically cycle day three through seven or four through eight or five through nine. A typical starting dose is five milligrams or two pills of letrozole for each of those five days, but sometimes providers can go up to a 7.5 dose or three pills of letrozole for those five days. Studies do report a higher pregnancy rate in patients with PCOS if they start off with the five milligram dose. But every person is different and there are some other protocols. Sometimes people take the medication longer than five days. Sometimes people take different doses of medication. You really do need to talk to your team about the protocol that's right for you. Topic number five, side effects. Vast majority of patients complain about side effects with Clomid compared to letrozole. Clomid can be hot flashes, headaches, mood swings, even visual changes. And with taking Clomid multiple months in a row, there's an inactive metabolite that builds up over time. Remember that it attaches to the estrogen receptor and there are estrogen receptors, especially in the uterine lining. So taking Clomid multiple months in a row can be associated with a thin endometrial lining or uterine lining or even ovarian cysts. It can also be associated with thinning or decreased cervical mucus. Letrozole has less side effects, but some patients have reported dizziness, fatigue, some joint pain, and mild headaches. But you don't have that build up that you do with Clomid, and you have less risk of ovarian cysts, and you don't have estrogen receptor impact with letrozole on the uterine lining, so it's not associated with a thin uterine lining or decreased cervical mucus like Clomid is. Every patient is different. I often tell my patients, I will never know how a medication is going to impact you, uh, but these are the commonly reported side effects with Clomid versus letrozole. Topic number six, what to ask your doctor when you're trying to make this decision. Or if your doctor just prescribes one of these medications, ask why and start with these three questions. Number one, based on my personal situation, which medication do you recommend for me, Clomid versus letrozole? Number two, how is this medication that you're recommending gonna impact me? Are there side effects? Are we gonna be looking for a thinning of the endometrial lining or ovarian cysts, you know, are there side effects and how are we going to look for them? And question number three, how am I going to be monitored? Are we going to do ultrasounds? Are we going to do checkups every two to three months? Um, how are we going to check in after I start using this medication uh, to make sure that it's working, that I'm ovulating? And especially if you don't get pregnant within the first two or three cycles, what are we going to do differently? Let's recap. Clomid and letrozole are very common medications used for fertility treatments. They are both oral medications that you take for five days at the beginning of your cycle to help with egg recruitment, maturation, and ovulation, but they work in two totally different ways. Clomid actually blocks estrogen receptors in the body to decrease estrogen levels and increase gonadotropin production in the pituitary gland to help with that egg recruitment process. Letrozole blocks an enzyme that helps convert androgens to estrogen. Um, so the body has less estrogen. It is not impacting estrogen receptors like Clomid does. There's different side effects with each of these medications and they can be used for different indications. And I've left you with some very important questions to ask your doctor to find which one is right for you. I hope you found this information valuable. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, and be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.